Let's put the IS and the LM curve relationships together in the same graph. Okay, in a separate video, talk to you about the goods market equilibrium as represented by the IS curve, this combination of interest rates and output such that the goods market is in equilibrium. The LM curve, where the demand for money equal to the supply of money at different interest rates and GDP levels. When we talk about an overall equilibrium for the economy, we want to look at where both the goods market and the money market simultaneously clear, where the demand and supply of goods is, um, is equal, and where the demand and supply of money is equal. Now, a, a relationship in the background is this is also interest rates and output such that the bond market is in equilibrium. We talked about how the money market and the, and the, and the bond market are very closely related, but I think this is a, a relevant time to just mention that the, you know, the bond market is in equilibrium at these interest rate and output combinations as well. So here we've got the LM curve and the IS curve uh, together. Where these two cross is where the economists are going to be uh, obsessed. So here are a couple of practical ways to remember which of these two things goes up and which of them goes down. Now, I, I apologize for this because it's, it's really kind of silly, but when I was uh, an undergraduate learning this stuff, this is how I remembered it. So. Take it for what it's worth. LM is like the limb of a tree, kind of pointed upwards. IS is like an ice slope. It's going down. If you keep that in mind, you'll at least start out at the, with the right uh, shapes of these things. IS curves down like an ice slope, like skiing. LM is like the limb of a tree. Now then you have to remember you know, what, you know, which one of these two things uh, you know, what the, the, the two things represent, LM is where money supply equal to money demand, IS where the goods market and equilibrium, any event. So here we start with this, this combination. And I want to talk about just a couple of ways in which we might use this relationship. So let's, for example, consider a situation with a fiscal stimulus. Now, as in a lot of things that use comparative, comparative statics in economics, there's a menu of, of steps that you should think about as you do the analysis. So I would say first, what curve is initially affected? Then, which direction does it shift? And then, what happens to interest rates and GDP to have both goods and money market in equilibrium? Now, I'll tell you that when you have an open economy with balance of payments issues, the foreign exchange market issues, there are a couple of intermediate steps that are going to need to be uh, analyzed in terms of the foreign exchange markets. I'm going to set that aside because we're really looking at a closed economy version of this. 
And as a reminder, in this simple version, prices are fixed. Not because that's realistic, not that, not that that's the, the way we want to have a more sophisticated analysis, it's just to get our feet wet with this, with this approach. Okay, but back to the, back to the stimulus. First thing you want to think about is, well, does this affect the money market or does it affect the goods market? Now recall that the underlying relationship of the IS curve is where national, uh, where GDP is equal to expenditure. That's the y equal to c plus i plus g. LM curve is where the money supply equals the demand for money. No, so, so you ask yourself, well, if there's an increase in government spending, what's going to be, you know, what's, which, which of these two things is going to be affected? If there's a decrease in taxes, which of these two things are affected? Well, Government spending clearly shows up in the IS curve here. Interest rates, or, I'm sorry, uh, tax rates will affect, if it was an uh, income tax, it would affect consumption. If it was a change in the taxes on business investment or mortgage interest deduction, it would, it would change the investment part. So it looks like there's a pretty good shot that this is, the fiscal stimulus is gonna show up in the IS curve. Now, if you go back and look at the IS curve derivation and introduction to that, what you'll see is that the IS curve shifts to the right. Emphasize one more time, that is not by itself a reflection of an increase in demand, aggregate demand. The IS curve is not the aggregate demand curve. But what you see is that there is a change in the combinations of interest rates and output such that the goods market is in, in equilibrium. Okay, so let's, let's imagine that we start, okay, the IS curve shifts out, and we start with this initial level of interest rates and output. Now what you've got is an increase in aggregate demand because Let's, let's say that this was a, an increase in government spending, say. That point A the initial combination of interest rates and output doesn't, doesn't cut it anymore. You've got more demand one of two things has to happen. Interest rates have to go up, or which will dampen in, uh, investment, that crowding out effect that we've talked about before, or output's gotta go up. Okay, so let's, but at this point of, uh, on, uh, this, this point A now represents a point of excess aggregate demand for goods and services. <clears throat> and what we have typically is that you will have a combination of higher interest rates and GDP increase in order to give you that new equilibrium. Now in a separate video I'll talk about more explicit algebraic versions of these two relationships and you'll see that what, how much, whether your interest rate goes up a lot or whether you have a, a robust increase in, in GDP is ultimately going to depend on the, the slope of the LM curve, which, uh, well, let me just hold off on, on that because we'll, we'll talk about that relationship in a bit. But it should be pretty clear that, you know, the flatter the LM curve, the, the less interest rates have to rise. Okay, and there's a, there's a, a good economic interpretation of that that we'll 
get to in a later stage. So what does a fiscal, so here, so we've got, we figured out which curve was being initially affected, shift of the IS curve to the right, to the right, second part. What happens to interest rates and output? Well, with this new fiscal stimulus, we have an increase in output and we have higher interest rates, the crowding out effect. Okay? So a decrease in tax, tax rate would give you similar kinds of uh, results. So if you found yourself at an equilibrium at uh, interest rate of I0 and Y0, you're in a recession, government can stimulate the economy by higher government spending, lower taxes, but it comes at the cost of higher interest rates. Okay, so that's the that's you know the first use of the combination of these two. Let's look instead at a monetary stimulus, and let me just redo this. <clears throat> IS curve downward sloping like a I slope, LM curve shift uh, heading up. We have, for example, an open market purchase of bonds by the Fed. That first you, thing you do, right, well, which curve is affected? Well, if you've got an increase in the money supply, okay, it's not up here in the IS curve, it does show up down here in the LM curve. Go back and look at the video about the LM curve. What you'll see is that the decrease in, or the, the increase in money in circulation shifts the LM curve out, okay? Similar to the IS curve, generations of students will tend to say, ah, the LM curve is the supply of money. The, uh, the increase in the supply of money shifts the LM curve out because that's the aggregate supply of money. No, no. It's new combinations of interest rates and output that get the money supply in equilibrium. All right, so we started out at point A with more money in circulation. We've either got to have falling interest rates or an increase in output or some combination of the two. If we kept interest rates the same at this new level of the money supply, Okay, you'd be on the, the new LM curve, but you wouldn't be in an equilibrium on, in the goods market. Excess supply of goods in that, in the, uh, um, in, so to the, to the right of the IS curve, goods market's not in equilibrium. Something else has got to change. Alternatively, if the interest rate was the thing that fell, you would have lower aggregate um, or higher aggregate demand for, um, for uh, loanable funds because you've got lower interest rates. You'd have excess aggregate demand for goods, not an equilibrium. You have something in between at like a, at a point C. At lower interest rates and higher GDP. So what we have here is a monetary stimulus that will result in a new equilibrium with lower interest rates and higher output. Again, that reflects that 
the fact that the, the monetary stimulus, at least, certainly in the short run with, with fixed prices, is going to lower interest rates, making investment in new plant equipment and, uh, and consumer borrowing less expensive, output increases. So here's a combination of how you might use the uh, IS and LM curve together. There are lots of different types of analyses that you can do with this. Um, it's sort of an alternative to looking at uh, aggregate demand and aggregate supply. The big difference here is that we're keeping uh, the price uh, level fixed, at least in this uh, initial take of uh, ISLM. Final word about this, when you start to bring in an open economy where you can have funds flow in and out uh, as foreigners find your interest rates more attractive or there's a change in the exchange rate, there's lots of other, there's a whole series of other interactions that will that will need to be taken into account when you have a, uh, either uh, an international component to this or when prices can change. But at least this is a start on uh, the basic apparatus of using IS and LM uh, curves uh, together.